Good morning, fellow privateers. Yes, it's me again. It's me again on the Asian Open. I promised you that I would not be um, speaking to you every night, but there's stuff going on, as difficult as this market is. If you recall, yesterday, 24 hours ago, probably be exact, we had all these very uh, bearish engulfing dollar trades that um, kind of worked, but the way that this FX market is, when you have a, you know, we're approaching historic lows and volatility, you just get no follow through at all. And here's a good example. We'll go through a few, but um, <clears throat> on uh, Tuesday we had the bullish engulfing in Australian dollar. And then we had a doji, followed up with a doji day. Now we have the, the Australian jobs numbers coming out. I suspect this thing moves, you know, 30 or 40 points either direction. Um, but I, I just want to point out to you that this is, you have to be so tactical right now in this market. Because very rarely do things fall through. See another example in Euro. The big, big bullish engulfing day on Tuesday, followed up by a, you know a new high, which is what we were thinking. And it did get up to some fib resistance, and then failed and uh, actually closed lower on the day. Uh, Sterling, you know the typical bullshit, um, big big up day, tons of Brexit optimism, followed by a down day. Um, we failed up at a fib up here at 131.10. Uh, Kiwi dollar. Remember, Kiwi did not have the bullish engulfing, but it was still a very bullish bar. And then we actually had an inside bar. So Kiwi's interesting to me. Um, Wednesday's bar is inside that big bullish bar. So I'm making a note of that. So I think you can trade either side of that in this in your session and we're clear, clearly we're a little bit closer to the low than the high but you know if we get a break of 68.50 uh, I think you can get you can capture some pips there dollar swissy we're still short that and then I see this bar you know I see the outside reversal bar on Tuesday then I see this doji like perfect doji certainly less bearish dollar swiss than I was 24 hours ago um, we got down, we test this old low here at around 80, and that, that's a fractal low. So this is, we know this is like a, I'll just call it a cycle low, it's an important low. Um, although I don't really think that that low is correct on trading view. It was more like 89, but either way, we got into the 80s and then bounced. Um, Dollar Rand had a big move up. On, you can see this. This is a really uh, ugly, really, really ugly. Um, I think we just got the bearish engulfing day, but it popped up here on the budget and then reversed and sold off all day. Um, and one more dollar max. Dollar max. Dollar max had a pretty good, pretty good day. Made a new low for this move and then and then back up. So the bottom line is the dollar has recovered a bit. And, you know, when I was talking about this last night, I thought we would be, I mean, I figured we'd make new lows for the dollar today, which we did in most of these pairs. Um, but there's just no follow through. So you, you literally have to have about a, you know, 12 hour view and keep it super nimble. Here the S&P's new high daily close, highest daily close since way back in November, it looks like, which was the, remember this area here, this was that gap that we talked about, 2762 on the G10 meeting, and we opened at, uh, you know, we opened up around 92, I think it was, so we got up there today, high was 90.75 uh, another another thing to look at is, is gold gold had a huge day up day on Tuesday 
and then we failed at this 1350, which is a big, big psychological and technical level, and then we reverse lower. So, you know, a lot of it comes down to the European PMIs. We have some inflation data and the PMI data out of Europe tomorrow, and I think that's probably the next, you know, 50 to 100 points in the euro, depending on how those turn out. Um, NASDAQ was interesting. So we've had an inside bar on Monday. Tuesday was a doji. Wednesday was a doji. Obviously, it's barely just started trading 38 minutes ago, so there's nothing going on. But um, starting to lose some momentum, some of the, this equity rally, and we got into a very big um, resistance area in uh, in S and P's. Goldman had, I think I tweeted this early earlier that we, you know, between this gap up bar, which was a cycle high, you can see here, like if you go back to these fractals, 28, 15, 10 to, I guess 10 up to 24, really. You had three. Uh, let me get my drawing tool here just so you guys can see this thing. You got this one, this one, and this one. Massive overhead resistance here. And, you know, we're going to be looking to sell. Um, you know, we scalped against the 2790. But, you know, you see this little area here. You see this top here. You know, you call it kind of a triple top. And you got this Fibo right in here. So... We're getting into an area, and, and with sentiment elevated, I believe it's around, I haven't run it yet, but it's got to be close to 90. The risk reward of buying high equities right now is very, very poor. So anyhow, just to summarize, um, equities starting to lose momentum, playing it from the short side up here, been patiently waiting like kind of the last 50 handles in the S&Ps. And then as far as the dollar goes, not nearly as bearish as we were 24 hours ago. And uh, I would pay close attention to this uh, European data that's coming out on, um, in the morning. Anyhow, I'll leave it at that. Good luck, and we will speak to you on the European Open. All the best. Cheers.